a bit of jiggle here. I like a bit of jiggle, but not too much. When it's too much, it, it's unrealistic. And I, I don't know, I don't really like it. Hi there! Hi YouTube! I'm coming to you live because we have some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff I have to share with you. So first of all, we have a bunch of motion demonstration for every single character. Well, not every single, but we have, well, we have for Rapunzel Pure Grace, we have for Cinderella, and we have for Grave, we have the kits as well with details. And we have uh, two more things, we have the animation for the skin for um, Scarlet Black Rose, as well as um, a small animation for Cinderella. So we're going to be watching all of that. So first and foremost, we have Rapunzel right here. So let's see how it looks. Would you like me to pray for you? This animation is crazy. She's looking good. All right. Man, people are going to complain about this 100%. People are going to be so mad about this. There's no way people are happy about uh, the shawl hiding her. Like, the shell hiding her her ass Would is going to make people angry. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. The jiggle motion on the booba is crazy, though, I will say. So that's good, at least. But, like, at the end of the day, we know what people like. And uh, personally, I don't mind. I know a lot of people are very, very angry, especially on the Discord. Where, like, this, the, the official Discord is, like, a, a feedback site. But people have been posting their complaints. People are very upset at the lack of jiggle if you compare like volume skin from the past compared to what we have now. And uh, they feel like the fan service has been going down. Very, very angry people. And also because they're complaining about the amount of gacha skin, etc, etc. I think it's, I don't care. But I, I understand that people are angry. Angry and I can understand why they are. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. I still think she looks very, very good here. She looks so pretty. I love her design. She's a sniper too, which is really cool. I want to see the ultimate animation. I don't think I don't know if we have a lot of a uh, sniper defender. Do we have other sniper defender? Probably. Her her breast is insane. That is absolutely bananas. But because she is a sniper, I'm pretty sure. It says SR, but like when you see here, like this looks like a rocket. I'm sorry, but this looks like a rocket launcher right there here, the charge. <laughs> anyway, maybe it's one of the buff that she has or something. I don't know. Uh, oh, we got the we got the wrong thing here. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There she is. There she is. There she is. Uh, so here we actually have her keys. So she's the burst skill one. She's a defender, sniper rifle, cut iron. Obviously, we can see her ammo capacity is six. The reload time is two seconds. Um, I'm not going to go into detail with what we have here. I'm going to zoom in actually to make it better for you guys to see. I'm sorry if that was a bit uh, of a of a mess up on my part. But here you go. So every I'm going to I need to hide that tail, dude. That tail is uh, out of control. <laughs> My apologies. So here we go. So we can see here we have Sanctuary, right? So here it says activate at the start of battle, affect self. Create a shield equal to 20.59% of the caster's final max HP continuously. Activate when using burst kill, affect self. Create a shield that is similar to the one before. So essentially, when this battle starts, you get 21% shield. And when you, do, you use her burst kill, she also get that shield. On top of that, Activate only when full charge status is maintained for more than one second. And a shield is present. Affect all allies. Attack increase by 10.41% continuously. So it says continuously here. So does that mean you only need to activate it once and then it's permanent? Or does that mean that you need to keep charging for it to say active? You know, because here it says active... Activate only when full charge status is maintained for more than one second. I am not entirely sure. Because this for me means... That you you full charge your weapon... For more than one second. The charge time was one second. So you charge time for one second. Then you keep charging for an additional second. And so if you charge for two seconds... You buff the, the damage of your team. 
Does that mean that once you fire a shot, the buff goes away or does it stay? It does say continuously, so I think the buff stays until removed, most likely. I am not entirely sure with this, with the wording. Uh, we'll need to do some tests here. Honestly, uh, I apologize. We'll need to see previous Nikkei's if they have some similar effects. Uh, and then we can figure out if it would uh, function the same way here. Now we have a se second skill, which is going to be Prey. It's all, again, a passive. Activate when attacking with full charge, affect self, recover 2% of the caster's final max HP. Um, so again, this is once you fire... My tail is coming back, dude. Once you fire that shot, so essentially you charge for one second, you have your full charge. You keep maintaining for one second, you buff the team. Once you release your attack, you heal yourself by 2%. Now on top of that, it also says that once you full charge, and the full charge is maintained for more than one second, so similar to Sanctuary, uh, and a shield of presence, again, affect self, current HP down by 2% every one second continuously, but you cover the shield HP equal to 3.16% of the gas of my final max HP every one second continuously. So essentially, when you charge your attack and you release it, she's going to heal herself, but if you keep charging the weapon, she's going to damage herself but recover her shield. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. And now finally, we have a burst skill, the Garden of Utopia. First and foremost, very important thing to note here, it's a 20 second cooldown, which is very cool, obviously, so you don't have to have two burst skill one in your team. Um, affect self, max HP, up by 10.13% for 10 seconds. Affect all allies, attack damage, up by 15.24% for 10 seconds. So it's stronger than the other buff, which means that at maximum value, she essentially gives a 25 to 26% attack damage between her multiple passives. Um, so yeah, essentially, she creates a shield for herself. She loses her HP to maintain her shield, and when you shoot the shot, <laughs> she heals herself a little bit. So that's very interesting. Uh, what worries me a little bit here is that as a defender, it doesn't seem like she has any kind of taunt. So... Our defenders, by nature, have more aggro than other characters. I actually don't know. I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't know. But yeah, very interesting. I like this idea that she has like some... Uh, she can create a shield and then she can heal herself, but also you can choose to have her lose her own HP, drain her HP to recover her shield. I think it's pretty cool. And obviously, atop all of that, she has some team-wide uh, attack damage buff, which is very nice. I think that she's not going to be as strong as some of the mainstay, like, top, top tier burst one characters like Leader, for example. But I think she's definitely going to have some value, especially if you're a new player, right? So that's my thoughts on her. But I need to try some things out. I'm going to have to test it out to have the full picture of some of this to figure out how the continuous, continuous attack damage function. I think this means forever, essentially, once you do it once. Because here, it, it would say a duration otherwise, right? The ulti does say for 10 seconds. This one says continuously. So I think this stays here unless an enemy debuffs you. So moving on, the second character is actually going to be Cinderella. So we have her motion demonstration here. Oh, did you need something? She's so pretty, dude. I'm I love her. I'm preoccupied admiring myself in the mirror right now. Nice, nice, nice. We see a lot. Not that much jiggle, but still pretty good. So you can see that she actually has a very special mechanic. That's the first time we have this. Is that the rocket launcher? She's not a charge, shoot, charge, shoot. She's a charge, shoot, 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 shoot. So actually, a weapon functions a bit more like um, some of the LMB, um, LMG, the machine guns, where like you start shooting and then it ramps up and the speed goes up and up and up, like uh, Winter Ludmilla, for example. Uh, but here, she charges and then she shoots all of her rockets very fast. Which is very interesting because to me this means that in the future, you might have some characters that actually function differently. They might incorporate some new mechanics to the pre-existing weapon. I think this is a very smart way to go about it. It's very cool. That's 
a bit of jiggle here. I like a bit of jiggle, but not too much. When it's too much, it, it's unrealistic. And I I don't know, I don't, don't really like it. And she can keep shooting. I wonder, like, if you stop shooting before the ammo is fully out. Last slippers, full contact. Full Damn, that's so cool. The animation is awesome. There's a reload that happened here. Yeah, see, there was a reload here. I think this was from Grave, and it didn't affect her because she was already max ammo. Alright, that's pretty cool. Animation looking good, I would say. And now we actually have her full kit here. So first of all, Defender, she's a burst skill 3. Her weapon is a rocket launcher, she's called Electric. Uh, 24 ammo capacity, the reload is 2 seconds, which is pretty slow as per usual. And the effect target fires a laser to perform a small range attack. There we go. Um, so this is it. The charge time was 1 second and the full charge damage is 300% of the damage. And uh, she deals 200% when attacking core as per usual. Now, if we look at the skill themselves, we have the Flawless Glass. Uh, so she has two passive and one active, of course. So Flawless Glass, skill one, activates when entering burst skill stage three. So here it's a burst skill stage three. It doesn't mean when she uses burst three. So which means that if you have another character in your team that is burst skill stage three, she should still get that buff, I believe, right? As long as you enter the burst skill stage 3, so as long as you do burst 1, burst 2, burst 3, regardless of who uses burst 3, she is going to get that buff. Affect self, attack up by 2.71% of the caster's final max HP for 10 seconds. Interesting. She sees scales off of her own HP. Uh, moving along, um, activate when attacking with full charge. So as long as you full charge and we know how she works, you need to full charge once and then you keep shooting. Um, affect self, charge speed 100%, removed upon reloading to max ammunition. So essentially this means, this is the special weapon she has. Essentially this means once you full charge once, the charge speed is 100%. So that's what, this is essentially saying what I was saying otherwise, like you charge before you charge 100% and then you shoot continuously and essentially it means the charge speed is fully skipped and you can just keep shooting but it only says removed upon reloading to max ammunition so if you reload then it will go away right but i think this also means that if you have a character that technically gives you ammo back if it gives you a hundred percent of your ammo back it might mean that the buff goes away too, the charge speed goes away too, so we might have to reapply it. So you want to make sure that you don't have a character in your team that is going to give you 100% of your max ammunition back, right? I think this is what it means. Um, so let's say you have a character that gives you like, you know, 25% of your max ammo, and you decide to reload at like 75%, you're going to end up at 100%. Anyway, you know what I mean. Moving on, activate when hitting your target with full charge. Uh, deal 136.6 of final attack as additional damage. That's crazy. Okay. Now, the skill 2, Dirt Resistant Mirror. Activate at the start of battle, affect self. Decoy, create an avatar with 96% of the caster's final max HP continuously. Activate when entering burst skill stage 3, affect self. Create an avatar, the same thing. Activates when decoy exists. Affect self every 3 seconds. Beautiful. Max HP increased by 1.6% continuously stack up to 12 times. So this is essentially a maximum of 16%. Uh, 16, 16, 19.2% HP. So this is essentially when the battle starts, you create a decoy. So the decoy is going to take damage in your stead, I believe. Once you enter burst kill stage 3, the decoy is going to be recreated. Or there's going to be a second one. I assume it's going to replace the previous one. And as long as the decoy is here, every three seconds you increase your max HP to a total of 36 seconds to get a maximum of 19.2% max HP, which is very good. So essentially, as long as your avatar doesn't get one shot, which it seems unlikely with the amount of HP it has, you should be fine because every... Every time you do a burst rotation, you're going to get it back up, which is amazing. 
Now for a burst kill, glass slippers full contact, the cooldown is 40 seconds, so you're gonna want to have her with another burst 3 character in your team. Affects random enemies, deals 682.96% of final attack as damage, attacks sequentially for 10 times. So what is good here is that it is specifically sequentially, which means it's not one attack, it's multiple, one after the other, which means that if there's only one boss, I understand it as you are going to deal almost, uh, you should be dealing this damage times 10. So that's going to be like 6,829 uh, damage to one boss, right? Unless it has to be different targets, but they don't say that here. On top of that, affect the same target when in beautiful status. Deal 28.9% of final attack as additional damage. The mirror the, st mirror, mirror the stack counts of beautiful. Mirrors the stack count of beautiful. So essentially... What? I've had the same target in beautiful status. Deal that amount of damage. I take it as... You deal this amount of damage times the amount of stack that you have of Beautiful. So if you have 12 stack of Beautiful, you're going to deal 28.9 times 12 of, uh, of final attack damage on top of it. Mirrors the stack count of Beautiful. Or it's going to attack every single target 12 times. I feel like this is a bit confusing. The way I take it is that you deal... So every time there's going to be one attack, you're going to deal like 700% damage. And you are going to do another attack on top of it that's going to be 30% uh, damage, right? On top of it. And then it's going to hit a different target and you're going to have the additional one. So essentially, you need at least 10 stack of Beautiful to make sure that it hits the target twice, is what I understand. So potentially, the, the potential damage here is going to be like 700 times 10 plus 30% times 10, right? Which is massive, potentially. But again, this is worded a bit weird. I would like it to be a bit more clear, but I think this is what it means. Now, moving on to the last character I want to have a look at here, it's going to be Grave, obviously. Wow. I'm ready to rewrite our story. In theory, she has a proper Nikkei model now because she had a, a mass-produced one. She's looking good. She has like that uh, that fire coming out of the weapon, and uh, Harmony Cube on the back too. I love how they gave her a new body, but they, they just stole her pants. <laughs> Like, here's your new buddy, but we're gonna have to take the pants. Sorry about that. Man, she looks cool, dude. I love the the belts. Alright, looking good. Damn, that animation is sick. Heck yeah, baby! Interestingly, she's also part of Old Tales, so she's gonna be in the same squad as Cinderella. Okay, so now her kit. She's a supporter, she's bird skill 2. She has an assault rifle, she's got fire. She has 60 bullets, real time is 2 seconds, blah 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 blah. Okay, now let's see her skill directly. So we have, first and foremost, man, that's a lot of that's a lot of text. So we have here. Uh, the quality is not the best here because I think there's too much text. So, heat emission, that's her first passive. Activate when prediction status end. Affect self. Remove 100% of bullets. Okay. Heat emission, reload ratio 50%? Minus 50%? Removes heat emission under certain conditions. Activates... Okay, where does it talk about prediction here? Prediction, prediction... Uh, 
What gives her the prediction status? Plot spoiler, overheat. Affects our prediction. Okay, so it's a burst skill. So essentially, when she bursts, she enters prediction. Once prediction ends, so we are going to go in order of like out of order, essentially, so we can understand better the, the first skill. So we're going to start with burst skill plot spoiler. It's an ultimate. The cooldown is 20 seconds, which is nice. Um, effect self prediction. Current HP goes down 1% every one second, lasts for 10 seconds, grants unlimited ammunition for 10. Okay, now it makes sense. So essentially, every second you lose 1% of your HP up to 10 seconds, which means you can lose a total of 10% of your HP. On top of that, you have unlimited ammunition during the duration, and you can pierce for the duration. So, you enter burst, you lose 1% HP every, ten every second, you have maximum unlimited ammo, and you have pierce damage, which is very cool. Your pierce damage increased by 52.8%, and your critical rate increased by 85.19%. That is a massive self buff. Right, and she is functioning as a pure damage dealer, uh, which is awesome. Especially if you consider, you know, maybe the fan service was not on top, but we have some very strong characters that have pure damage in the Evangelion collab. Um, on top of that, she affects all of her allies, and she increases their damage by forty-eight point two percent, their pure damage by thirty-nine point ninety-eight percent, and the maximization capacity goes up by three rounds. So, essentially, she loses HP, but she buffs herself, she buffs her pierce, she buffs her critical, she has unlimited ammo, and she has pierce damage. Now her teammates are going to get attack damage increase and pierce damage increase. And a bit more ammunition. Good for snipers, specifically. Now, once she goes out of her 10 seconds of ultimate uh, prediction state, you lose all of her bullets, right? So she immediately loses every bullet because she had unlimited ammunition. So she goes down to zero, she has to reload, right? And now she enters, I guess, heat emission, which means that the reload ratio is down by 50%. So I think that this means that when she reloads, she doesn't reload 100% of a bullet. So instead of getting 60 bullets, she's going to only get 30 bullets. But you can remove the heat emission under certain conditions. So essentially, she debuffs herself when she... Like, she went full ham during the ultimate. And when she goes out of the ultimate, she's like, I'm kind of tired. I can't reload as well as before. <laughs> now, um, when she is specifically in the heat emission, so she has less bullets in her... She reloads less bullets, but she recovers 2% of her final max HP every one second continuously, which means... That during the ultimate, she loses HP. Once she is cooling down, she actually heals herself back. And she heals twice as much as how much damage she drained. Right? Which means that if she took damage, she's going to heal more. Right? Awesome. On top of that, when she's in hit emission status, she will increase the Burge Gouge feeling speed of all of her allies by 38.96% continuously and increase their pierce damage continuously by 48.4%. Which means that surprisingly, when she ulties, she buffs her team by 40% pierce damage, and when she's out of her ulti, she's going to buff them even more by 48%, right? But as soon as she goes away from heat emission status, that pierce damage buff is going to go away, right? So now the question is, how do we go out of heat emission? So... Activates after landing 15 normal attack, affect self, overheat 1, attack increase by 15.48%, removed upon reloading to max ammunition. Okay, so what's interesting here is that you can't reload to max ammunition because of heat emission. You can only reload 50%, unless you reload twice in a row, which I guess is possible to do. Now, activate when normal attack hits after prediction status takes effect. So that means that this part here specifically is going to activate once you're in ulti form. Once you use the ulti or the burst, um, change according to the number of hits. The previous effect triggers repeatedly. Okay. If you hit 30 times, when prediction and overheat one status, 
Overheat 2, attack increased by 20.66% continuously. If you hit 60 times, your attack damage is going to increase by 30%. And because the previous effect triggers repeatedly, that means that if you shoot 60 times, you're also going to have the buff from the Overheat 2. Which means you're going to get a buff of 30%, uh, 50%, 75% damage essentially, right? 76, 77 essentially, uh, which is very strong. Um, okay, good to know. How do you lose the heat status? The heat emission. Removes heat emission under certain condition. What does that mean, under certain condition? I think this means... Okay, I think this means that if you fully reload your gear, your weapon, then this goes away, essentially. So what you want to do is never fully reload if you want to take, if, to take advantage of all the buffs, essentially. That's all it means. Yeah, because essentially, the first time you're going in a rotation, um, you won't have all those buffs, because you won't be in prediction status. And uh, you can get up to overheat 1. But you can't get the rest. You can't get overheat 2 and overheat 3. So essentially, the first rotation, you'll have overheat 1, which means she's more backloaded, right? The first rotation, she'll be a bit weak. She'll get 15% damage increase. When she ulties, suddenly everything comes into place. Big buff, big everything. And then when she goes out of her ultimate, she suddenly gets hit emotion, she has less bullets, but she starts buffing her team. And then when you keep shooting, she's gonna go to overheat 2, overheat 3. Um, actually, overheat 2 and overheat 3 only take effect once you ulti again. So that's what that's how it works. She's weak at first, then you ulti, you buff your team, you get out of ulti, uh, your reload is weaker, but you recover HP. And uh, you buff your team's bird gouge and pierce damage. And then you can ulti again, and now you can reach overheat 2 and overheat 3 once you have unlimited ammo, which is bananas, right? My question is, once you have unlimited ammo, does that mean that it's considered having max ammunition? I think probably, so you might lose overheat 1. I'm not guaranteed on that, we'll have to test this out. I'm sorry, this is like, those abilities are very convoluted, there's a lot here to unpack. So now the last thing I want to watch, we have the animation for Scarlet Black Shadow, the Longing Flower. Far too frilly and bothersome. Methinks mine own attire shall be sliced before the foe. <laughs> Far too frilly. Well, Scarlet in very Scarlet fashion, as always, but this skin looks amazing. Obviously, this is censorship. This, you can see the booba in game, uh, but that's pretty much it. And here we have a little animation that's 15 seconds for the old tale special animation. <laughs> Coming I soon. That. And this is a shorter version of it, so you can know what to expect. I believe that our days will soon oh, damn. Fruit. That was bananas. I love the song. Okay, so that's essentially a preview. So we're going to be getting the full animation soon. I assume it's going to be in the game. Yeah, there it is. Witness it for yourself in the game. What will be the outcome? Who will she face? So there we go. Looking very, very good. Super excited for the for the actual uh, animation in game. So that's all it is. I'm so sorry for like rambling because I'm trying to make sense of everything in those kits. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all the good, good comments down below. What you think? Who you excited for? And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.